All right, folks, it's time for the unboxing of the Brody's Ghost Collected Edition. This is the box. It's bigger than usual because the book is bigger than usual. This collects all six of the Brody's Ghost books into a single volume, plus other sort of rare full-color stories that I did, different stuff like that. Hang on, we gotta, I only get one chance to do this right. Don't mess it up, Krilly. Let's come over here and do the final slice. Wasting time, come on. <laughs> I think this will do it. Let's pop it open. Oh my goodness, the packing peanuts. So exciting. Thrilling video. Whoa! This is it, people! Brody's Ghost. The collected edition. Look at the thickness of that book, guys. This is the thickest book I've ever had published, probably the thickest I will ever have published uh, throughout my entire career. And what a thrill it is to see all of this together. And I gotta say, it's a great way of, uh, of reading the story. You can just sit down and read the whole thing uh, cover to cover. Uh, thank you so much, though, to all of you who bought the individual books. You made this possible. We would have never gotten to this book if you had not bought those individual books. And uh, yes, of course, I will put a link uh, in the description uh, where you can buy this book if you want to. And if you do want to, I want to thank you. But let's go ahead and get on with the video. Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crowley. I'm back with another video. Today I'm going to be doing a vlog for the first time in a number of years. Uh, to make sure you have something to look at though, I'll be doing a drawing of uh, my main characters Brody and Talia from the series Brody's Ghost. Of course the new collected edition has just come out, as you saw earlier, and I thought I would commemorate it with a little chibi drawing of them. Uh, and so uh, as I do that, I will be talking about last week when I went to San Francisco I was flown out by Adobe, the great uh, software maker, and uh, they had me doing live streaming. And uh, later on, I'll be telling you how you could watch all of the live streams that I did, uh, all together about six hours, believe it or not, of live streaming that I did uh, there in San Francisco. It was a blast, and uh, I'm looking forward to telling you, telling you a little more. Uh, about it, but uh, perhaps I should explain just a bit what my concept is with this uh, drawing that I'm beginning work on. Uh, I thought, uh, wouldn't it be funny to do a drawing of uh, Brody and Talia having uh, reversed roles? That is to say, Talia is the ghost, Brody is the uh, ordinary or seemingly ordinary human being. I thought, what if we flip that around? We'll make Talia the ordinary human being, we'll make Brody the actual ghost character in this drawing uh, as a chibi character and uh, see what that looks like. Should be uh, fun. If for no one else, at least for me. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk a little bit about how it was that I ended up in San Francisco last week. It really was uh, a thrill. Um, got an email not too long ago from a guy named M Michael, uh, or I should say Michael, because he's from France. Don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but uh, he works for Adobe, and he invited me to be part of this uh, series of live streams uh, that they were doing last week. Really kind of a major undertaking, uh, what they decided to do, because uh, it involved not just me, but loads of uh, different artists flying them all out to uh, San Francisco, uh, to their facilities there. I'm not sure if it's that's world headquarters where I was last week, but it certainly was a big uh, building there uh, that uh, has a lot of uh, Adobe operations going on inside, and they had their own little studio. And um, uh, yeah, they shot uh, back to back each day. I believe it was uh, nine hours of live streaming video on Twitch. And uh, happily they did, uh, you know, record all of that. I mean, for those of you who missed it live, it will be possible for you to watch the recorded uh, the videos. And um, I suppose I might as well just go ahead and tell you right now how that is possible. I've put the links in the uh, info box, the description of this video. You can uh, uh, follow those links to see each one of the live streams from those days. Now the, ways, the way that they did it 
it's not quite as simple, if you want to watch what I did, it's not quite as simple as just clicking on the links, um, because they have uploaded the entire stream, that is to say, a single nine-hour video uh, for each one of the three days that uh, contains everything, all the different artists, back-to-back. Um, so if you, uh, and I'll, uh, I'll put all this in the description, uh, if you want to see just my uh, live streaming from last week, you need to not only click on those links, but you need to sort of scroll forward. For the first uh, three days, you need to sc scroll forward to the uh, three-hour mark. I believe it starts uh, at the three, three hours, and then it goes to um, 4.30. Four hours, you know, four, four thirty, four hours and a half before it stops uh, and moves on to the next person. So anyway, that'll all be down there. And then actually, I'll go ahead and spill the beans. The the last one, maybe we saved the best for last. Uh, on the third day, I did not only my own live stream again for another hour and a half, but I joined the one and only Sophie Chan. Hopefully all of you know Sophie Chan, but those of you who don't, she's uh, one of the great uh, original YouTube artists. She's been uh, doing drawing videos on YouTube almost as long uh, as I have. Uh, I, th I started in 2007. I think she uh, started in 2008. In any case, I got to do a collaboration live stream with Sophie Chan right there at the Adobe Studios. Um, it was so much fun, and what we did is we drew a single picture together uh, on an iPad. Now, I guess I haven't mentioned until, until now, that really the whole focus of these uh, live streams was to show the new Adobe software, um, and in my case, it uh, was actually promoted as, you know, watch Mark Crilly draw digitally for the first time, um, which was not really false advertising. It's pretty accurately true. I'd, I had uh, had the chance to experiment with a stylus drawing on a um, Cintiq, I think it was, back when I went to Norway last year, uh, very briefly, maybe two minutes tops. So, um, apart from that, this really was my first time drawing. To clarify, not to say that my I have never used digital software. That is absolutely not true. Since 1995, I've been using Photoshop. Uh, so I'm not like one of these guys who uses exclusively uh, traditional media. It may appear that way because of my videos. Um, are uh, essentially always using traditional media. But I, I have been using computer software, just haven't been drawing with a stylus on one of these Cintiq-like pads where you see uh, the actual lines coming from the tip of the stylus. Um, I did uh, last year buy uh, one of these, I'm tempted to say Wacom, but I think it's Wacom. Uh, the uh, you know, one of those things that allows you to draw um, in a manner of speaking using a stylus, but it's sort of disconnected. It's more like a mouse, you know, and the cursor is moving across the screen of your computer. Some people are able to to draw complete pictures that way. I found that it's great for coloring. I can't actually, um, I can't make the lines connect when they, when it's, you know, when it's up on the screen. Uh, and I'm moving it around like a mouse. It, it almost feels like trying to draw with a mouse. It's very hard for me to do. Well, anyway, th I finally had the experience last week in San Francisco of drawing um, w the sort of Cintiq style way, except what we were using was the iPad Pro. Uh, again, something that I had never really experienced until last week. And the, uh, the uh, is it called the iPencil, the Apple uh, pencil. And uh, so, yeah, a lot of firsts here. Uh, I w it was my first live stream on Twitch. It was my first uh, time using the digital uh, drawing stylus uh, uh, technique there. And uh, so, yeah, last Tuesday, I guess it was, would have been the first time uh, that I sat down to do one of these uh, live live streaming broadcasts. I thought it went pretty well. People seemed to like it. They said it was almost like uh, a new record or something that, you know, 
Bless your souls, my YouTube followers. Uh, you turned out in droves, and they were uh, thrilled to see uh, the support, especially last Tuesday, that first day, when people turned up to see. Will Krilly completely blow it? <laughs> what does he look like apart from his hand? And uh, so that was... Uh, a lot of fun, and of course, yeah, there's sort of a learning curve. I thought I could devote some of this video to talking about my impressions. What, How do I feel about drawing uh, digitally? Um, you know, I think the major thing is the, the undo button, the ability to undo a line. Here I am drawing uh, traditionally. I can't undo any of this. I need to erase if I want to make a line go away. So uh, people saw that when they saw me doing the uh, live stream saw me making copious use of the undo button uh, and, you know, periodically erasing as well. Um, and, um, you know, just, I think the going full color is also a little less nerve-wracking uh, than it normally is when you use markers or whatever it is and you're going full color. You, uh, the undo becomes <laughs> so helpful uh, in the digital realm. Uh, even with an eraser or whatever, you basically can't undo um, traditional coloring. You have to sort of paint over it or come up with some method of uh, getting rid of the color. So that opened up a lot of possibilities. In fact, this drawing that I'm working on right now is a little inspired by a drawing that I did. Was it my last day? It's all starting to blend together, but I was in one of these live streams and I did a drawing uh, people had suggested in the chat room, and that's a whole other element of live stream. Of course, most of you are familiar with this, but um, you know, I've been doing YouTube videos. I'm not used to there being a chat going on and people being able to, you know, in real time, kind of react to what I'm doing. It was a lot of fun. Um, but uh, someone had suggested, can you do a Mickey Falls Brody's Ghost crossover? And uh, I came up with, in that case, having Brody reacting to a ghost of Miki instead of Talia. It was uh, Miki from Miki Falls. You know, those of you who know my two graphic novel projects, this has meaning to you. <laughs> those of you who don't, you're like, Miki who? Brody what? Um, but in any case, some people did request a sort of crossover between these two uh, comics that I'd done, and so I, that's what I did. I did Brody reacting more or less in this same pose that I'm drawing right now of Talia, uh, reacting to seeing the ghostly Miki instead of the ghostly Talia, which is what we're used to uh, in Brody's Ghost. So this time I thought uh, I'd take the same basic concept, which, which I had drawn digitally last, I'm going to go ahead and say Thursday, uh, unless it was Wednesday. <laughs> I'll say whatever I feel like saying. But um, that was fun to do digitally. This time, of course, we're doing um, traditional media. I think I'm going to end up using watercolor. But um, that time I had never drawn, of course, had never drawn Miki as a ghost. I also have never drawn what I'm drawing today. That is uh, flipping these two characters around and having Brody end up being the uh, ghost character. So it's going to be, when we get to the coloring part, it's going to be kind of fun to uh, change the colors, especially because I'm so used to drawing Talia with these very pale colors. She's going to get the bold kind of Brody-ish colors. And then suddenly Brody is going to have those light, purpley, uh, mostly white, washed out colors um, that are normally associated with Talia. So anyway, let's talk a little more. Maybe I can talk briefly about my impressions of San Francisco. I had a really great time. Uh, and, uh, you know, you, uh, Adobe was so nice about allowing free time. Uh, and I had the mornings and one of the evenings I had uh, completely free to sort of... Uh, uh, enjoy the city. And uh, I did ride a trolley car. <laughs> Had to do the touristy thing. Um, but um, I have been to uh, San Francisco before. Uh, I believe this is my third time, if not a fourth. The last time I was there, though, was quite a long time ago. It would have been, uh, I think, 2003. I was on a book tour uh, for the uh, Kiko books from Random House. And so it had been quite a long time, and um, I think on my previous visits, I just did not have so much time to wander around and explore, so it was fun to... You know, I jogged across town to um, Fisherman's Wharf, and saw I could see the um, Golden Gate Bridge in the distance. And, um, 
stroll through Chinatown. It really is one of, Mich uh, uh, one of America's most beautiful cities, certainly one of its most distinctive. Um, sadly, also one of its most expensive now. Apparently, it's very hard for anyone to afford to live there. But I can certainly understand why people would want to live there. It's just such an awesome town. Um, but let's talk a little more about these streams. I was uh, assisted in my streaming activities by two wonderful people. Uh, Brooke Fran Francesi, Francesi. Oh, um, I never did get the pronunciation of her last name right. But uh, she was one of the two sort of co-hosts of my live streams. The other was Paul. Oh, I'm forgetting Paul's name as well. Sorry, Paul. I got your first name. <laughs> Does that count? And uh, Paul was, uh, and Brooke had uh, awesome chemistry, and the three of us yucked it up and had plenty of laughs. So, uh, indeed, if you want to uh, check out those live streams, you know, last week, uh, sadly, was a... Uh, a landmark in terms of me not having delivered a Friday video for the first time in years in my defense. I have stuck to this uh, new video every Friday thing um, quite consistently, even valiantly, I dare say, over the years. Um, but last week, boy, after that trip, and uh, I, I had to take a red eye, if you know what that is, I had to fly in the middle of the night from... Uh, San Francisco to Detroit. I was just too wiped out. I couldn't, could not bring myself to do a video. And if I had done one, it would have been subpar. So I thought this is the week to do it because, like I said, six hours I delivered of kind of video content live streaming. Uh, so those of you who are like, Krilly, where were you last week? Um, the good news is you've got six hours if you haven't seen them yet. Probably more. <laughs> video of me than you ever really wanted to see. Uh, also good news for people who hate time-lapse. If you hate time-lapse, rejoice, my friends, because this was a, uh, last week was a time-lapse free zone. It was entirely done with no time-lapse at all. Um, live streaming. Time-lapse just was impossible. Uh, heaven knows I wanted to time-lapse, friends. <laughs> I wish I could have time. Now here's the fun part. I get I get to write the R.I.P. on Brody's clothes for the first time. Those of you who know the Brody and Talia characters, you know that Talia normally has R.I.P. on her shirt, but now it's Brody, who is dearly departed. So he gets to have that on his shirt, and I guess she has no uh, logo on her shirt anymore. But yeah, I um, I enjoyed the whole live streaming experience, and uh, perhaps I will. I'm sure a lot of people will say, are you going to start doing Twitch now? And I would like to, I hope to, but uh, let me be honest, guys. You know, even just doing a, a single video every week, every Friday, is tricky um, with my book deadlines. So to take on live streaming uh, in addition to that, whoo, kind of hard to imagine. Maybe I can... Do it every once in a while as a uh, celebration of something or other to commemorate some thing or another. Um, and uh, well, let's talk a little bit then about meeting Sophie Chan for the first time. Those of you who are you know fans of Sophie Chan are familiar with her. You know, talk about a collab. Here I was face to face meeting uh, Sophie Chan in person, and guess what, folks? She gave me one of her FIFO dolls. Let's pull it out here. Ta da! Yes. She is so awesome. I got to meet her and her brother, um, and they, they, this was uh, their first time in um, the United States. You know, she lives in Canada, um, and uh, she, uh, I didn't realize she had never been to America before, and so uh, this was her uh, inaugural visits uh, to the U.S., and they made quite a big trip out of it. They went all the way to um, Disneyland, and I that was after the San Francisco trip for them, so I have yet to hear their report on what they thought of Disneyland. Uh, but she is so she is just a, a wonderful person, just as you would imagine her to be, very kind and gentle and uh, uh, modest. And we had a lot of fun doing this live stream together. 
um, as I said, you know, we had this iPad, and we were passing it back and forth. You know, we, we, the whole thing, this whole idea of Sophie Chan and I doing a uh, live stream, it was entirely spontaneous. We had not planned it. Everyone was supposed to just stay in their own individual live streams. And I think it was on Wednesday during my live stream that uh, the idea popped up. Hey, what if um, what if Sophie Chan and I do an actual uh, collab during her live stream on th uh, Thursday? So that's an added kind of cool thing about it that it was so unplanned and sp spontaneous. But we went to her and said, hey, what do you think, Sophie? And she was like, yeah, yeah, let's do it. And so there we were with this iPad, um, passing it back and forth. Here, my idea was: look, here, since we are actually in the same room at the same time, let's not do you know me do half of it and then hand it over to you for the rest of the session. Let's keep passing it back and forth. And that's what we did. I think we must have passed that iPad back and forth about you know five times each. I'm going to say something like that. Um, so that it truly was this collaborative experience of working on a drawing. She drew, you know, she inked one of the eyes, I inked the other eye. It was, uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, hang on guys, I'm going to pause the camera here because I want to get out my watercolors. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do just a little real time here with watercolors. Um, as I said, the idea is to sort of do roll reversal here, which to me means um, kind of color reversal. Brody has brown hair, uh, so I'm going to give Talia brown. I guess this would be Talia in her uh, real life state before she uh, turned into a ghost. But I also thought, wouldn't it be fun if, you know, her clothing color becomes the kind of colors that I tended to choose for Brody, which is to say these very muted kind of greens and blues and browns and stuff. So that is what I'm going to be doing here. And uh, I said last week, for those of you who love no uh, time lapse, or rather those of you who hate time lapse, <laughs> you should be in seventh heaven because uh, I've got so many... Uh, hours, like I said, six hours basically of um, live streaming video now that you can go to by way of the uh, description in which you won't see even a second of time lapse. Uh, but that does not apply to today. Today I'm going to make use of time lapse because I realize I've already put in about 20 minutes of uh, gabbing here. It's probably time to start getting a little closer to winding this guy down. So I'm going to use time lapse to finish uh, all the coloring and uh, some of the uh, line work and maybe come back and make a few closing remarks about the whole live streaming experience uh, before we uh, bring this video to a close. Well, that's bringing us closer to the end of this uh, illustration. Of course, it can't be done unless I add blushies. Does a person have blushies when they're <laughs> looking at a ghost? Talia does. In my world, you must never forget the blushies. So, uh, can I add this? And I have actually one more thing that I want to do before I uh, wind this video down. And uh, sadly, I think that also should be done in time lapse. So, give me just a second. So you see the little tagline that I came up with for this drawing, Brody's a g, -g ghost <laughs> Also added a little of the beloved white gouache. I thought the drawing would benefit from it. I think everything benefits from a touch of the beloved white gouache. Wouldn't you agree? I think maybe you would. One more time I want to say thank you to Sophie Chan uh, for her beautiful FIFO doll. Make sure you check out her channel. I've put a link to that as well as a direct link to all of those uh, live stream videos 
that Adobe did uh, over at Twitch. Go ahead and follow those uh, links and scroll if you want to see what I did to the uh, uh, different parts that are you know listed there in the description. And uh, I really do hope you enjoy this six hours of live streaming video. A uh, big thank you to uh, Adobe for flying me out to San Francisco and making all of that possible. But I think it is time to lay down this pencil. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I'll be back with another one real soon.